On YouTube, we boot reviewers tend to focus on American heritage brands. Uh, but speaking as an Australian, good quality boots come from all over the world and coming from different countries do tend to reflect the design styles and values of their home countries. When I started my boot journey, I really liked the look of the American heritage service boot styles and my first quality Goodyear welted boot was the Thursday Captain. But very early on, I discovered the Italian boot maker with a very different DNA, Astorflex. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. How are you going? If we haven't met, my name is Tech. I live and work on Wajuk country, and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, their leaders past, present, and emerging. Today, I'm talking Italian. Well, not literally. <laughs> I'm talking Astorflex, the Italian bootmaker coming out of northern Italy, uh, from, I believe, the province of Mantova. Uh, Shakespearean tragics amongst you should note that their factory is near Verona. Wherefore art thou? <laughs> When I started my boot collecting journey properly, it was during the pandemic, and as I scrolled boot sites, I discovered US service boots. Since then, much of my channel has covered American heritage brands, and frankly, uh, that's mostly where I lean, just from the aesthetic. But that's not to deny that other countries make excellent quality boots. Boots coming out of Northampton in England, uh, RM Williams out of Australia, today's Japanese bootmakers, and of course, Bandong in Indonesia. So it's no surprise that Southern Europe, and specifically Italy in this case, has a long tradition going back to the Middle Ages of working with leather and making boots. However, we tend to see Italian boots as the high fashion articles from uh, Gucci, Prada, Valentino, Ferragamo. These are high fashion and not really my style. But like the US with its dressy brands like Ellen Edmonds, Alden and Cole Haan, there are American rugged casual boot counterparts. And so in Italy, which has a tradition not only of fashion dressy boots, but also of more working class casual and work boots for farmers, shepherds and country labourers. Estorflex is the hush puppy to their Gucci. While I can't say that Astorflex is in my top five favorite boot brands, they are definitely in my top 10. So I thought I'd review why and go over my Italian journey. Let me say before I start that I'm not sponsored, uh, not paid to say nice things in this video, but I will leave an affiliate link to the website below. I'll get five or 6% if you buy using that link to help defray the costs of running this channel. First, the company. Astorflex has a history that dates back to the early 19th century. Founded in 1810 in the small town of Castel Dario in northern Italy, in the heart of Italy's shoemaking region, Astorflex began as a family shoemaking workshop. Ownership by the same family is now in its sixth generation. From that small family workshop, it grew into being the town's factory, uh, growing over the war years, and has gained recognition, particularly in Europe, for its dedication to crafting high-quality, artisanal, handmade footwear. Uh, since the late 20th century, Astorflex has focused on a sustainable approach to footwear production. With a focus on environmental responsibility, the company has transitioned to using eco-friendly materials and production processes. This commitment to sustainability not only aligns with contemporary consumer values, but also pays homage to the brand's heritage as a traditional artisanal craftsmanship has always been inherently sustainable. Today, Astorflex is a prime example of a heritage brand that successfully marries tradition and innovation, continuing to produce footwear that's not only stylish and durable, but also eco-conscious. Astorflex made a really wide number of styles, and from what I've seen, uh, no one retailer, or at least web-based retailer, carries anything near their full complement of styles, except maybe Huckberry, which has a, a pretty good uh, partnership with them, but even so, still carry an incomplete selection. 
I understand that in Europe they wholesale to brick and mortar retailers who presumably also carry only selected models. Uh, they make boat shoes and loafer styles, at least five styles of chucker boots, including uh, mock toe versions, several styles of Chelsea boots, and four or five lace up ankle boots. There are commonalities. First, all their boot names end with flex, like uh, bit flex, dowel flex, boot flex, brown flex, and nim flex. It's a clever branding theme. Second, they all use very casual leathers. Suede, uh, oil nubuck, oily matte pull-up leathers. Third, they all have a natural crepe rubber outsole. Comfortable, squishy and grippy. Fourth, they are all stitch down construction where the uh, uppers are lasted and then flared out and then stitched directly to the midsole. I have to date four pairs of Astoflex boots. Uh, the first, which I bought in May 2021, is the sand-coloured suede boot flex. Then I got the brown flex chucker, and then later the bit flex Chelsea. I recently got the dowel flex ankle boot, but I don't have it anymore. <laughs> I moved it on to my friend Nick in New Zealand, who was able to convince me that he would get more use out of them than me. Now, let me quickly go through each of these uh, that I've got in front of me. The Boot Flex was an early purchase in my boot journey. I think this is like the third or fourth boot I bought. You can catch my detailed review up here. You can see that it reflects the service boot aesthetic that I was in at the time. It's a little over six inches and is plain toe. And while it's obviously suede, it has the look of a uh, military rough out boondocker or a jump boot. I like the fine detail of the blind eyelets uh, the simple stitch down around the boot and the use of a leather midsole uh, that it stitches down to. This was not my first try of the natural crepe rubber sole. Years and years ago, uh, I had a pair of Clark's original desert boots, like the original original, uh, that obviously uh, features that outsole. I'd always found it very comfortable and grippy, maybe a little slippery on wet tiles, but otherwise very good. These felt very much like how I remembered the experience. Crepe rubber is a natural rubber, almost straight off the tap on the tree. It's processed with some acid to cure and then run through rollers called crepiers to produce sheets of this stuff. Industrially, they are shipped to processors who are chip and then vulcanize the raw rubber and make it into other rubber products, or as in this case, they just use the sheets and cut them into outsoles. Characteristically, they are squishy and grippy in most circumstances, reasonably durable because they are elastic rubber, uh, but really ugly after a while because they pick up all kinds of dirt. This is a clean one, this is an old one. I've been wearing these boot flex boots as a weekend comfy boot when we go out grocery shopping or meeting friends for lunch. They are so soft and light that you forget you have them on. You don't often see the boot flex much uh, on websites anymore. They seem to have uh, been mainly superseded by the dowel flex ankle boot that I'll talk about later, but they do come on from time to time. When they do, they sell for about 130 US dollars. Uh, the next Estor flex boot I got uh, in my collection is the brown flex chucker boot. Uh, wearing the boot flex, I remembered my old Clark's desert boots and I got an itch, so I had to scratch it. This brown flex is a chucker boot following the same traditions as the desert boot. It's low cut, uh, just up to the ankle basically, uh, only a couple of eyelets, uh, stitch down construction as well, crepe rubber sole. These are in an oil new buck which shows a fantastic color variation in the pull up as you wear them. Uh, I'm loving the creases on the vamps because when I walk uh, they really move the color around. Again the comfort is under the foot. The crepe sole, uh, the leather midsole, the stitch down offering more flexibility at the ball than a Goodyear welt, and the use of a foam back leather insole liner. The leather I find does need some break in and I, I don't feel I've got there yet. That may be because also it's fully leather lined. The low cut nature of the boot does push into my ankle and the Achilles tendon especially, and I'm not really comfortable with this boot yet. Uh, as a result, I haven't been wearing these as much as I should. And that causes, you know, its own vicious circle because every time I put them on, I'm reminded that they haven't broken in yet and they're still stiff around the collar. 
and then I don't pick them up next time. <laughs> Having said that though, they are a great summer boot despite the full lining and they go well with a relaxed bleached jeans. I sometimes wear them with shorts and sockless even, perfect for the summertime. They're priced at around a couple of hundred US dollars. Uh, pretty much in the same ballpark as Clark's Desert Boots. But Huckbury often do uh, put them up for sale, so that would be a good pickup if you get them then. Uh, next in my collection came the Bitflex, one of their Chelsea boot designs. They have several. Being Australian, I love my Chelsea boots. For our lifestyle, so easy to pick up and pull on, whatever the weather, whatever the occasion. Uh, these are so comfortable, I wear them almost exclusively at home. When I get home from work and I change out of my heavier service boots that I tend to wear at work, or even out of a pair of RM Williams, I will pull these on. The soft suede and crepe rubber sole and the comfortable last makes them so easy to, to, to lounge in, you know, to do cooking in, do the washing up. Uh, and even wandering to the pub for a quick beer every now and then. <laughs> I, I think the suede is the same as the hide that's used on the boot flex. It's pretty much the same colour and it feels the same sort of rough nap. The suede used by Astaflex isn't the Charles Estead variety, which have a much smoother, uh, almost velvety nap. In this case, they use Italian tan suede, uh, which feels more countryfied and rugged. The nap feels a bit uh, longer and almost has the same feeling as rough out. Uh, it's a pretty tough suede. Uh, I fell off the curb in these boots once. Uh, no, I wasn't coming, coming back from the pub. Um, the boots clipped the edge of the curb and slipped down them, but there wasn't a scratch. There are a couple of distinctions from my other Chelsea boots, uh, obviously the outsole, but also the stitch down construction. That is unusual in a Chelsea. The goring panels are also different. They seem to have a, a wider sort of honeycomb weave and look different because of that and also feel more give when you pull them on. Now in that, there may be an issue for later. I, I don't know if that means they'll be uh, less forgiving or stretching and uh, will more quickly get flabby with use. We'll have to see. As with all Chelsea boots, uh, you need a pull loop, even two of you Australian. However, this particular pull loop, uh, like the one on the boot flex, it's tiny. <laughs> I can hardly get my little finger into it. When I pull these on, I generally just grab the loop and then rather than try to push my finger into it, just use that and pull it on. Uh, otherwise, it's an easy on, easy off boot and uh, really comfortable and so super light. They list at uh, 250 US. I, I think that's maybe 50 bucks more than I'd expect in my opinion and I try to snag a pair when there's one on, on for sale. Uh, the last pair I got was the Dowell Flex ankle boot. As I said, I don't have it anymore and I sent it to my mate Nick in New Zealand. You can, however, watch my review up here. What I really liked about the boot was that it was a comfortable, light ankle boot. But, but I won't go on, you, you can watch the original review. Unfortunately, it was too much like a service boot in design. Uh, I think if you wanted a light, comfy anchor boot for going about your business, the Dowell Flex is perfect. But I, I do have a huge number of service boots in my collection uh, and I just wasn't going to get the use for them, preferring the distinctiveness of the boot flex uh, in this collection. Nick convinced me that he would get more loving use out of them and so off they went. So that's my Italian Astor Flex journey over the last couple of years. Um, why do I like them? Why do I say that the brand is in my top 10? Well, for a start, you know, they are characteristically and aesthetically quite different from my American service boots. Their Chelsea boots are different from my Aussie Blunnies and RMs. As European as they are, they are visually and characteristically a mile apart from my Northampton country and brogue boots. So as a style, they offer a distinction to my various outfits. I also like the comfort. The generous round toe lasts and the squishy crepe and soft suede are selling points to me when I pull off heavier and more structured boots to relax at home. They are incredibly comfortable, even without the best arch support inside these boots. Those are the extrinsic factors. 
More intrinsically, I like the idea that they have an Italian tradition about them. I like the idea that a century ago, an Italian shepherd wore something like this to herd his flock. And that's different from an American logger uh, or an English country shooting party boot. I like how they make me feel relaxed, uncaring about my boots, forgetting I have boots on. I also like their focus on sustainability. Now, I'm not one to talk. I try my best, but I'm really not one to talk. So I admire those who really put their money where their mouth is about eco-sustainability. So there you go, my Italian journey. If you like this video, can I please ask you to do me a favor and click on like, and also tell me what you think. Do you like these sort of round up type of videos? If so, I can do one about my, say, English journey uh, sometime in the future. Uh, until then, you guys take care, and I'll see you soon.